Hi and welcome to Synapse. Uh, in today's video, we shall um, go through the high yield topics in pathology. Okay, first of all, we've seen this in the previous videos that the number of questions coming from pathology is up to 25. And pathology is a logical subject. It can be remembered better with the help of flowcharts, images, and tables. Special remark is that general pathology needs more uh, time for revision than a systemic pathology. Okay, and uh, while hence when you plan your revision further on, you make sure you give more amount of time, okay, or more number of revisions for general pathology when compared to systemic. What are the resources that can be used for uh, the preparation? Uh, I attended Dr. Devish Mishra classes in Bangalore. It was for a duration of four days. Uh, I felt uh, the classes were like, very useful. Um, the notes that I made during the classes, that, that's, that's all I used for pathology till the last day of the exam. Uh, very well put together and all the high yield topics were there in the notes and uh, if, if, if at all I found like I found extra points uh, from here or there like as in from the review books or the Q banks I saw I would just add on to my notes and uh, I would uh, highly recommend you know attending his classes I found it really useful so check out the dates and book your slot and see uh, if you you know can make it to the class it will be really useful next uh, coaching notes if you have joined dams bhartia you're using prep ladder marrow whatever you're using okay um, take the notes okay read them and then add your points onto the notes very useful then a very important point regarding pathology preparation is that you need to use a standard book here okay i suggest you keep robins beside you while you're going through the notes of a particular topic okay open the corresponding chapter in robins and go through the images okay the microscopic findings okay read what is given below the image uh, go through the tables the charts okay because questions more often come from that section and it forms a photopic memory and uh, it, it helps retain better okay so images are very high yielding from uh, uh, robbins and harrison harrison especially for systemic pathology like the images uh, for systemic pathology then uh, review books can also be used like the mcq books, books that we have used during our ug we can use that and uh, any extra points we find in those books can be added to the notes now let us go through the high yield topics uh, first one this is regarding the general pathology so we will go through this one by one first is cell adaptations uh, very important here is reversible and irreversible cell injuries then uh, about cell death the different mechanisms that is necrosis epitosis pyroptosis necroptosis and net that is neutrophil extracellular trap so what all you need to know here is you need to know the mechanisms how exactly this uh, 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 occurs or the um, definitions uh, the examples they are very important here then about the free radical injury and aging again important then inflammation is evergreen topic so again acute chronic inflammation uh, you need to know the different events that occur the order in which they occur and special attention should be given towards phagocytosis and the killing methods then about the inflammatory mediators very important to remember them and I suggest you make flashcards or you just constantly discuss about these mediators with your friends okay or you keep revising it okay then then it becomes easier to remember it then wound healing is again high yielding about genetics okay first here I would suggest you go through the pedigree legend you know you see how to read it what each symbol means okay and then you need to develop a uh, logic okay how to solve a pedigree related question so if you see it you should know whether it is autosomal dominant uh, recessive or x-linked dominant or x-linked recessive so you should be able to identify the given pedigree and you need to remember examples for these okay that we did, just mentioned ad ar xd xr so next uh, we have uh, concepts of genetic engineering so you need to know the different types of rna the coding and the non-coding rna okay and then the newer techniques of investigations which include fish okay you need to know about this uh, 
uh, fluoroscopic in situ hybridization and how it is used the images okay go through robins have a look at the images how the report uh, um, looks like okay then we'll go to immunology so here about b cell t cell it is pretty much mainstream i think everyone knows it you should know how the production occurs where they mature and what is the interaction how they bring about the humoral and the cell mediated immunity that forms the physiology and the basis so in the pathology part and all you need to know the major histocompatibility uh, molecule you need to know about mhc1 mhc2 um, and then uh, very important is the, are the hypersensitivity reactions the examples for them and uh, if, if I have to say one topic which is uh, having like the most uh, you know important given here it would be graph rejection there are a lot of questions coming on this topic uh, so I suggest you give a lot of time and understand it don't just read through this topic because uh, the graph projection it needs a little bit of concentration and attention it is a very beautiful topic so read it carefully and then autoimmunity very important you need to know about the concept here again so diseases like SLE, Jogren's and rheumatoid arthritis okay they need to be uh, they can be done in detail in medicine but you need to know the pathogenesis here and uh, the immunofluoros uh, immunofluorescence findings of these in these diseases is very important then uh, immune deficiency disorders the primary secondary disorders very very important the named disorders okay then amyloidosis everything and anything uh, about amyloidosis is important then neoplasia we need to know about the proto oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes what are the names how exactly they act okay so as in how how does a proto oncogene um, um, in results if mutation in proto oncogene results in like oncogenesis so you need to know the working of these genes and uh, gene repair defects okay there are a number of diseases that result so just make a table write down the defect and what, does, what it results in what is the disease that results if there is a defect in that repair mechanism and this topic is to be revised uh, just a week before the exam okay this is a volatile topic and extremely high yielding so this is to be revised the end moment so just mark it up in your notes with a double star this needs to go in the second revision section then uh, about hematology uh, WBC tumors very important uh, and previously on this uh, channel I uh, have recorded videos on leukemias you could go through them and then apart from that we need to know about the multiple myelomas and lymphomas there are videos only on leukemias available in the channel so ch do check them out then about RBCs very important are the anemias okay the differential diagnosis of uh, anemia different types of anemias are there and how do we exactly differentiate them we order iron profile studies and you need to know what is the configuration in different you know disorders or different types of anemia what happens exactly to the iron profile studies very high yielding then about paroxysmal nocturnal uh, hemoglobinuria very important pnh evergreen topic questions keep coming from that topic then uh, different hemolytic conditions okay next coming to platelets qualitative and quantitative disorders of platelets important name and the presentation how exactly is the clinical presentation then coagulation pathway and what are the disorders uh, in the coagulation system blood grouping and banking with transfusion protocols again extremely important okay with here they'll link it up with the clinical problem so you need to you need to be able to analyze the whole situation okay so go through this topic uh, well coming to systemic pathology so as i said this needs to be integrated with medicine because it's the same thing you're going to read in medicine again so you i suggest you keep this part while you're doing medicine things will go faster when you do these two things together uh, so i'll just mention the important topics anyways so that uh, you can you know highlight or give more priority to these topics so renal you need to know about all the diseases the glomerular tubular and vascular pathologies okay uh, arrange them in that order and study them like that very important here images keep robins with you every disease you read 
look at the image in the Robbins textbook okay and you see what are the microscopic findings okay and then CNS CSF analysis is very important different tumors age of presentation location clinical features okay then neurodegenerative conditions also very important respiratory system TB pneumonia obstructive restrictive pattern disorders and tumors very important so now for pneumonias again see it is the same as medicine this is exactly what you do in medicine right so that's why I was saying you can integrate and study because you can um, you know cut down on the time okay uh, instead of studying same thing again right so that's one thing and then for pneumonias you make a table okay write down the organism and what are the clinical symptoms or features okay of that particular organism see there are so many organisms which cause pneumonia and the presentation varies slightly okay the presentation as well as your uh, image I mean x-ray findings right so and the drug of choice very important so you make a table for pneumonia uh, the revision can be done within 10 minutes okay then CVS um, the most important topic here is rheumatic heart disease I have not included anything much because pathology uh, RHD is the only important thing medicine have so many other topics but pathology this is the important thing GI uh, you need to know about the different uh, polyposis conditions okay the different GI polyps and tumors along with that uh, the IBD okay inflammatory bowel disease very important difference between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis whether the microscopic findings and gross findings and so on next endocrine uh, here there, there's just about tumors okay and you need to know the microscopic finding of the tumors okay uh, just uh, go through the different tumors and see the corresponding images from Robbins okay just write one or two important points regarding the tumor if an image is given you know how to identify it and then clinical features how will the patient present if the tumor is present okay so that would be sufficient and reproductive ovarian endometrial tumors this you will do uh, the same thing will be done in gynecology so it's it's okay if you combine this chapter of systemic pathology with gynecology and do it okay it's totally fine again image is important and pap smear okay findings how to read pap smear what are the different cells what does it imply okay so very important again pap smear is given in great detail in, uh, in gynecology so that is it with the systemic part so uh, as I said general pathology needs more time okay and more number of revisions and then there's some topics which I said need to be revised just the day before the exam do that and, uh, and pathology is very hiding okay so yes good better best never let it rest until your good is better and your better best all the very best <laughs> and uh, like share and subscribe thank you